the hatching mayfly. This is my own pattern. Size 10 hook, you can tie on a 12 as well if you want. Take the thread from the eye to the bend of the hook, we'll speed that up a little bit. And remove the waist and just take the last few turns level with the barb and then spiral half a dozen wraps up to the centre of the shank. Now take about a dozen fibres of cock pheasant tail, offer that up roughly the length of the shank there, catch it in the middle and bind the butts down holding the tips of the fibres out to keep them on top of the shank as you wind and that represents the shuck. Now remove about half the fibres there to make it easier to wind and now wind those butts back to the bend to form the rest of the shuck of the fly. There we go. And now catch them in four or five turns of thread and then spiral wind rib forwards to the front there and remove the waist. Now take some super fine dubbing, this is Pale Morning Done and tease out a nice fine web of dubbing to use. Lay it along the thread and twist it anti-clockwise onto the thread, gradually work it into position. This is a very fine dubbing and it can sometimes be a little bit tricky to work. Uh, now form the body working forwards. And just tighten up the dubbing a little bit and make a couple more turns. Now start to go back. You can see how it just needs a little bit of a tweak occasionally. There we go. Two turns back onto the body of the fly. Now take a saddle hackle in this case and just strip off enough to tie in and then take five or six fibres off of the side that's going to sit on the hook. And you tie it on that way showing the dull side towards you. Lay it on. Catch in. Going to tighten that dubbing again. You can see how it's just playing up this time. There we go. And wind back down the body so you're building up the body a little. It's giving it a thorax area. Just be careful with these long saddles. They do get wrapped around the your fingers and the bobbin holder. Now wind the hackle, two full turns there and then spiral back so it's half palmered really. And another open turn there, another one. That was a bit tight so we'll just widen that slightly, there we go. And when you get to the back, one full turn round the back end there and catch it in. and take the thread through. If you keep it tight and push it fairly hard it usually goes through without trapping any fibres. Now just slice it off, don't snip. Now take some, in this case, pale olive bleached and dyed bull elk, that particular material is, and we'll just clean out the rubbish. Clean the rubbish out of the roots there and check the tips the stroke. There's a couple of twisty ones there, so there's one gone. There's the other. Now pop those tip down into the hair stacker. Tap them right in and give it a couple of knocks. Now take some dark deer hair. This is Seeker. I also use moose body hair. Any fine dark hair will do. This gives a mottling to the wings suggesting the veins 
add those to the hair stacker and tap those in as well. A couple more knocks. I normally use the bench, but you can see it if I use my knuckle. Now, lay it on its side and separate the stacker and pull the hair out by the tips. And there's your mixed wing ready to go. Now offer it up for length, just a little bit longer than the hook shank. And lay it in place. And one, two, three slack turns and then tighten them. And now a couple more to set it in place. Pull the wing forward and take a couple of turns of thread back onto that dubbing base there. Just to wedge the wings into place. Now, one, two, now lift the butts and set the butts up by taking some turns in front. Now, holding them out of, out of the way, just whip finish, four turns, usual way, so that you don't trap any fibres. In with the needle and pull out of the tail, slide the whip up tight there. Go. Slice that off with a scissor blade, and basically the fly's finished. Just work it so that you separate the butts from the tips because you're going to trim the butts. That's separated them pretty well. Hold them up, get the scissors in, Don't slip there, just go back in there again and cut them off, leaving them slightly proud to suggest the head and eyes of the fly because it's such a big fly. Got an odd fibre there we'll get rid of. Now turn the fly slightly so that we can apply varnish to the head of the fly itself and avoid getting any on the stubs of the wing there. There we go. There's the fly finished. Bar the last little bit, which is to turn it upside down and then with the scissors, cut, uh, turn it so that you can see what I'm doing. Cut a V out of the bottom of the hackle, which makes it sit a little lower in the water, suggesting the half hatched fly. There we go. One stray one there, get rid of that. And here you can see the trimmed hackle. A hatching mayfly, a really successful fly for me.